Uh, kia ora and thank you for having me. Um, it's not often that I get out of the kitchen to talk to people like yourself, so I'm really honoured to be here. Um, uh, just so I'll start off a little bit of background of myself. Um, so I'm a chef, obviously. Um, so I was fortunate enough to work with some of the top chefs um, ar around the world, so Gordon Ramsay and Heston Blumenthal. So I sort of bring a bit of a skill set into New Zealand that hopefully isn't here. Um, we, we opened the development kitchen about three months ago. Um, it's a purpose-built um, flavor development center. Sorry, struggling with no tech. Um, so I might just go into it without some slides. Maybe. Okay. Um, so yeah, so we got to New Zealand um, eight years ago with my wife, and we looked at New Zealand and went, you guys got some of the most amazing produce in the world. Um, what tends to happen now is that we're very good at putting stuff into a box and sending it overseas. And I started asking the question of like, what was New Zealand's cuisine? You know, we talk about Italian cuisine being pasta, et cetera, et cetera. What is New Zealand's cuisine? That's what started the development kitchen, of us looking at how we can take New Zealand flavors and actually make them perform to their full potential. So we're based in Wellington. Oh. <laughs> Um, we're based in Wellington on the terrace, so I welcome you guys to all come and see us. So we're a, we're a custom-built development centre looking at flavour produce. We've got tasting booths, so we go through and we look at um, sensory evaluation. So a lot of times we create stuff and then it's the Empress clothes and we go, this is amazing, but we actually can get to and get make sure that people taste it and they actually give us the feedback that we expect. We look at products from paddock all the way through to plate, and that's a key part, because I think one of the things that I have heard over the day is that I think we're very early in the processing of um, seaweed, but I think we're in that wheat stage. So we know that we've got an amazing product. We know that if we grind it, we potentially could make bread, right? But what about the pastas? What about the sauces? What about all of that other stuff that we just don't know about yet? And that's what I hope the Development Kitchen is going to do going forward, to look at that and see how we can actually create products that are not out there already, right? So not really interested in nigiri or any of those other things. But, you know, what if we take seaweed and we actually make it into something that's not seen anywhere else in the world? And I think that's the opportunity that the Development Kitchen brings into the seaweed world. So I've got a really cool picture that, um, <laughs> that shows you the uh, flavour profile, and on that flavor profile for chefs, seaweed's not there, right? So we just don't know enough about it. So we tend to use seaweed as a garnish, we put it on top of things, but, but it's a sort of a, an unknown for us, right? So as we go through it, we're starting to find more and more different ways. And my next picture that you have um, is we've actually been able to break it down into almost like a pesto, and we can create a product that is that nutrient rich without extracting things and really get these awesome flavors. We've also then sort of worked with um, Tana and Claire on um, sort of looking at different opportunities and we made um, seaweed caviar, so gluten-free vegan caviar. At $27 a little bottle of um, caviar, I think that that's a really awesome opportunity that if New Zealand can take the caviar opportunity and take it to the world, you know, that's, that's another mo place that we can use the seaweed for. Um, we've worked across a number of different things, and as you can see, all my amazing slides of um, the seaweed ice creams and all that kind of other stuff that really works now. We can actually see that all of these products are really, really easy to work with once we start understanding them at a molecular level. So once we start breaking it down a little bit, I use the example of wheat, and, you know, we can make flour and we can make bread. And I think that's sort of the basic high level. But then as you start digging down, you know, there's just so many opportunities. And that's what we seem to be unraveling every time we start to work with the product. So we've got the, um, oh, we work with the CRIs, so with AgriSearch, where we look at it as a whole product. We've started now looking at it actually stripped out in different formats. Um, we can also see that as a nutrient product, we can get it to work through the whole meal. So we can get the full sort of um, protein amount that we need, not in one steak. We, we tend to use it across the board. So in the starter, woohoo, 
Sorry. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Uh, so I'll, I'll quickly flip through this really quickly. Um, so. Yeah, there we go. So, um, yep, so like I said, um, we investigate and cutting edge uh, cooking techniques. It's a little bit what I touched on. And then that's our mantra there is our objective is to ensure products perform f in their full flavor potential. So that was our, um, our flavor matrix. And as you can see it, all of this kind of stuff really makes sense to us. Sorry, m really makes sense to us where <coughs> onions, tomatoes, and basil works together. But then I put it out to you is like, what do we put with seaweed to make it good? That's the kind of investigation that we look at and we try to really look and make sure. So I'm going to flip through. So this was, whoa. <laughs> um, so this is the, um, when we put it through a, a product called a PacoJet and we freeze it and then we break it down into this really amazing small product and actually the pesto that we're looking at. So we're working very cl closely on this and this is an opportunity that I think we haven't seen. We, we then made bread, so as you can see here, from the fur further side, you can actually see the pieces of seaweed in there, and then we made a Turkish bread, which was uh, baked with Moroccan spices, and then we made a flat bread, and as you can see there, and a, and a seaweed butter. So we had the whole seaweed option. So there, again, that whole start of being able to get all that protein and all those goodnesses through, you, through your whole meal. Uh, the seaweed caviar, as you can see, so it wasn't just me making this stuff up. <laughs> Um, and the other thing is, is that the Bellini is made out of seaweed as well. So what you can see on that plate is actually a massive seaweed. So we haven't done any nutritional sort of value on it, but you know, we, we can definitely see that it's in those forms that we can actually use it. Um, this is our seaweed ice cream. So we thought that we'd play on the, um, on the good old um, ice cream sandwich. So we used um, Rewa honey and seaweed. And for the people that were at the uh, launch of the kitchen, it really, really worked well. Right. Um, so then we got just a couple other things. So we had tacos. So we made the taco shells out of seaweed um, with a really amazing uh, hot sauce. So again, looking at all those different options where we can introduce the seaweed. And what we're looking for is, like I said earlier, is, is to by accident stumble over something because that's where real innovation happens. So at the moment, we're doing sort of the basic stuff. We're just adding it to existing products and looking at different flavor profiles. What we're hoping for is that we mess up one day and go, oh, we've just created the new seaweed, whatever that might be. So savory custards, again, uh, looking at that um, as an option. Um, cocktails, so Tane is very proud of his um, seaweed gin, but you know, like that brings a whole new process to it. So looking at that. Um, and then we did seaweed burgers, and this was really interesting for us. So we, we used a garum, which is like a soy sauce in the patty. So we look at that and we could maybe change the soy sauce that we make today into a seaweed soy sauce. So we used that in the patty to introduce that. Um, we made the, um, the biscuits for the American gentleman who's here. We made good American biscuits out of seaweed. Um, we then also used sea lettuce as our fill-in. So you can see as we introduce all that in, and what we're very mindful of is that seaweed's quite potent. You know, so we were very aware not to get that stage where someone bit into it and went, wow, nah. I know Claire drinks it every morning, so she's pretty immune to it. But some of us normal people <laughs> <laughs> sort of find seaweed a little bit overpowering. So we were very conscious of that the whole way through this. And the people that were there were actually really impressed that you know, sort of came to us afterwards going, how much seaweed was in there? When we explained how much seaweed was actually in the product, they're just absolutely blown away. So thank you uh, from the very, sorry about the technical problems and that I was making it up on the fly. Um, but feel free to contact us. Um, we do have a website that you can contact us, which is the devkitchen.co.nz. And you can come in and see the kitchen and have a further conversation if you need.